Our next category is best looking game. Previous winners in this category, 2015, The Order 1886, 2016, Joint Winners, Overwatch and Hyper Light Drifter, 2017, Cuphead, 2018, Dragon Ball Fighters, 2019, Sayonara Wild Hearts, 2020, Ghost of Tsushima, 2021, Resident Evil Village. I feel like every year when I read out that list, the one I really get buyer's remorse on is Overwatch. Yeah, I and mm. I actually, I really get it because I feel like I was, I can't remember if someone would probably tweet I know me I was, I was wrong, Mr. Hyper Light Drifter. I feel like I was, because I really didn't like Hyper Light Drifter overall, but looking back on it, it's a way better looking game than Overwatch. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I have remorse on that one for certain. It's, it's, it's never too late to admit we were wrong. No. I really appreciate that, the like 50, 50, 50 split here between like, there, there's super stylized and then super high fidelity. There's basically like a 50 50 split. Yeah. So, where will we but land this? 20, 20, I, I, 2016 I, I, was the year where we had so many ties, it was like we have to fucking fix this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why we did the poll in I, the first I, place. Yeah, yeah. I respect giving some due to um, the order 1886 because that, that was a game yeah. that did it not have a good looking game. It was a good yeah. looking video you can game. Give it any due. Who was it? I had a really long discussion about that game with someone. It was recently. Peter Willington. It was Peter. Yes, yes. Podcast the, coming. Well, yes. audio would have been released by now. <clears throat> That's right. Yes, that was a really good chat about that. Like it's like yeah, there were very finite good things to take out of that thing. Oh, anyway, um, according to the Wheel of Fate, it is I who shall go first. Uh, well, you need category. to tell what our nominees are first. Yes, our nominees are Live Alive, Immortality. TMNT Shredder's Revenge, God of War Ragnarok, Signalis, Stray, Elden Ring, Horizon Forbidden West, Gran Turismo 7, and Citizen Sleeper. Uh, I just, I'm just going to jump in. I'm not going to put it on the list. I, I, we've been pretty good so far about not putting any late game contenders. <laughs> We're just so afraid of making Jack sad again. I but I will hurt, say, you. of the games that I picked that didn't make it here because like it didn't get enough votes or whatever, uh, and I don't know how Barry feels about it, but Norco at points is an un just an unbelievable looking game with some of its like backdrops of this you know kind of slightly alternative uh a, not apocalyptic but dystopian kind of version of new orleans and the yeah. bayou and it's this like kind of like mosaic style pixel because it is pixel art but it's done in such a a different a, a approach to it tiny and, details at, and stuff yeah. and at times that game it just just it, you my jaw drops with how incredible that game that game looks, and there are probably things on the on this that will beat it. So I'm not going to make too much of a fight, but I, I have to at it's least worth the mention. Mention it here. It's so, it's yeah. it's one of those ones that I was kind of thinking to. My, I was thinking about it, and I was like, "That's going to be a painful but inevitable cut at some stage because mm. it's such a loaded cat." I mean, there's there's stuff that's not on here that that could hang in in, in any yeah. busy year. I thought because when you started your preamble there, I thought you were going to say Card Shark. And I was like, yes, oh, that is a is great also, looking game. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Norco, Norco, fantastic. Um, I love, yeah, yeah, I'll also give a shout out to Tinykin. I actually thought Tinykin would make the cut, but you know, what do you? I, I thought when he was doing his preamble, he was going to be like, you know, I played Sonic Frontiers today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to start this by making maybe a slightly surprising move here. Uh, I'm at least going to try whether I will succeed or not to cut immortality. <laughs> that's that's really it's a tough, for me it's a it's, tough one it, it's so good wow. looking but also it's an it's, fmv it's, it's fmv it's, 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 and it, it's and like on top of that in my soul and on top of that as much as i love it as much as one of my favorite game of the year games of the year ui is kind of ugly it's trash the yeah. ui is trash yeah, yeah. Oh, like, it plays like, yeah. it's 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 wonderfully art directed it's one of my favorite games of the year production um, design through the I, roof I'm, I'm also happy to see it stay on yeah, I, I, I wouldn't get rid of it first, it, but, frankly. I, I would have it stay on above about 95%. Because, like, the UI is okay, bad, don't yeah, get me wrong. Yeah. But, you know, the thing about it being an FMB game, it's uh, best looking. It is it not was, best assets. Yeah, it's it was, best yeah, yeah, looking, it's true. You know? it's, one, it's one of those things where I kind of, in my head, was like, I think somebody is going to make this argument that isn't me. So I'm going <laughs> to kill my darling. So but it doesn't the thing hurt is, you. I, I don't know about yeah. everyone else, but I have, like, at this time, uh, uh, at times over the year, kind of thought about, immortality and thought about the fact that all right yeah it's it's an incredible looking game but yeah. it's not you know incredible looking in the conventional way yes but even regardless yeah. of that like the way that it's shot the way that it takes 
three films from three very specific periods of, yeah. of yeah, movie yeah. making. And even I, as someone who's not a film buff, can clearly that's, tell the yeah. differences between the three. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's late 60s, Hitchcock, that's 70s, that's like late yeah, the movies. Argento movie, yeah. And it's not even just the way that they're shot and then and the film that's used, it's right. the obviously the production and yeah. and all the stuff that goes the into that. The sets all, all the way down to like the, the, the subtitle font. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, right now I can't believe my own fucking look. I am delighted. I'll absolutely take something else yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's not the, going first. Oh, oh guys, I, I, I'm that, so like, happy right, right now. Even I, as the, the immortality hater here, even I'm like, look, this film, this game film, it does look incredible. So yeah. It's deadly. That's, that's, it's that's like cool. it, like you you look at it and go, I cannot believe the fucking state of movies currently that this game is showing a lot of them all <laughs> yeah, yeah. fucking outrageous. The matte paintings in the first film in particular, like yeah. backdrops and stuff. I'm like, oh my God, this is insane. And like, I think one of the first clips I watched was one of the uh, late, fake late night interviews. And I'm like, this is such a good fake late night yeah, TV. Yeah, if you told me this was real, it, I wouldn't know. Does, you doesn't know? everything about everything everything about everything in that game looks lived in it looks, looks phenomenal like gen- genuine looks phenomenal gen- like the, the backdrops look like genuine backdrops that would have been used if you, i found out that these actually were bought from Sets. like yeah. a warehouse in italy and repurposed for this game i would not be surprised i, am, I mean I, like genuinely this is my favorite moment so far in this show is that it you was, guys have saved the game i thought you were all gonna murder like like, like we were saying about the importance of of uh um the, the main character's portrayal to that game i don't think this game is being talked about on any podcast including this one if they don't nail the aesthetics of the of the fake films yeah. i mean it is yeah. such an unbelievable achievement to the degree that i'm i'm happy to just tolerate the bad you are and it is bad i mean yeah. don't get me wrong Mar- but but yeah Mar- it's Mar- have i told you lately how much i love you <laughs> it's great tell me more <laughs> um Even so like the, the little is touches and like the, the, the way in which it's bad is good you know the way in mm. which the, the, the like 60s and 70s bad sets yeah. it's so perfect but, uh, but I, I guess as well like even I, I suppose if you want to really take a stretch of it like the bad things being good it's like I suppose this really is a way people would edit films together is just to have the clips spliced in front of you and yeah. you have to do you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. it it doesn't work video game wise but as an authentic experience of a, of being a, a film archivist and editor it's probably pretty close to what it was like um so yeah I guess cool um right let's see what? if I get any surprising barbs on this one uh straight yeah right. doesn't yeah, got to go Good vibes. It's it's, it's it. a very nice looking game that's clearly riffing off of the AAA experience, but you can tell where the corners have been cut. Yeah. The cat animates really well in a way where, hey, yep, those developers obviously have cats and know how cats animate. Um, but <laughs> these people have heard of cats. <laughs> but come the fuck on now, what are we doing here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like okay. those robots. They're very charming. Yeah. They, I they, think the game looks it. beautiful. I, it I is gorgeous. Keep it on over quite a few things that are still left on this list, to be honest, but. I also don't think it wins. Um, yeah, so I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna dig in on it. But right. I think really. the aesthetic of the game is lovely. I, I just, yeah, it it sets the tone for what plays out so so well. Um. Okay. Mark. Woof. Um, There's like two of these that I'd be okay with going, and then the rest, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is. They're a all tough, very good like, looking games, aren't they? It's, it's usually this category it, every it, year. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this and music are the like putting it, we us putting them right bang in the middle of the show really tests our our stamina. Uh, I would say I do really like the character designs, and it is you know one of my top games of the year. But I don't think like Citizen Sleeper. Like it has a, a obviously a look to it, but I think the it's got style. Uh, it has style to a degree, but I think that um, the way the the architecture of the ships and and whatnot, like you could make an argument that it's doing a, a brutalism style sort of thing in a way that um, Paradise Killer did, uh, but I feel like. I feel like the the design of the ship and everything around that is just a little bit too basic. Um, the uh, I don't think it really hangs in a best looking character um, unless you're just going off of like the actual character designs, which are you know they're, they're beautifully uh, uh, detailed and, and intricately detailed. But um, I don't think that's enough for you know if we're if we're looking for the best looking game of the year, mm-hmm. um, yeah. it has some good stuff, but I, I don't think it it takes 
that's enough to take it over the line. I mean, in the in the inverse of immortality, I love the UI in that game. I think it is really nice and intuitive, and the character models are phenomenal. The, the character portraits, I suppose I should say, they're so evocative. But yeah, it's, this is just one of those tough, best-looking categories where it's just like, we just did the whole spiel for immortality. We can't do the spiel for every single game. I love Citizen Theory. I love the way it looks, but got to be real about it. I don't know. It's not winning. Like, you know, because I've had um, Citizen Sleeper and Norco as like the two sides of that uh, kind of narrative-driven experience because I played them basically one after the other. And I personally, for me, I would take Norco over Citizen Sleeper just in terms of like... Right how they look because norco just screamed you in a way with the way that it presents itself um on a number of levels but citizen sleeper is the better game of the two for me but i do think that norco is is the better looking of the two and if that's not on here then i i don't think citizen sleeper hangs okay jackathy Mm -hmm. i mean this is great isn't it um (laughs) (laughs) no one wants to be next (laughs) no I mean, we're getting into the point now where pretty much no matter what I say, I'm going to upset somebody. Um, There's one I feel here that maybe no one's going to like argue too much. I'm going to cut Horizon. Um, yeah. Like, looks kinda, great. Like, <laughs> similar to how being disappointed about having to give disappointment to God of War, I wish I could muster an argument for Horizon because... Love the first game, and that art style is great. It's a great looking world. It looks really nice on the PS5, but I just can't muster arguments about the Sony first party output. This it's just yeah. it was so it, dulling. Do you know I, what I mean? I don't have it in me. A huge like something I don't think we talked about enough, even with the first game as well, is like the intricacies of the designs of those robots mm. is like just beautiful. Um, and some of the not all, but like in, in the games, like some of the designs of like the cauldrons and stuff are really good. It's a really pretty open world. Do I think it's going to win outright? I do not. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm fine with it going. But there are I definitely think, things I would stick I, the, the heel in for a lot more. And this is a, a different conversation for a different day, but and obviously, you know, someone who's designing one of these mechs is not in charge of how the game is as a whole, but you do sometimes feel like you know what maybe if you didn't spend 300 hours working on the design of this mech and actually focused on making a slightly more interesting fucking game Mm. i'm not going to stress too much about the fact that like the knee joint of this particular (laughs) mech is slightly less you know intricate in its design because you've actually spent time focusing on on whatever else and that's i think that's actually how they develop pokemon scarlet and violet that's actually the the (laughs) philosophy there so why (laughs) isn't pokemon scarlet and violet on this uh on this uh, list because i still want the game to look good you know pokemon legend arceus legends those skyboxes i'm telling you they're very good looking skyboxes but the rocks are purple yeah you know i I, I could hear an argument for arceus oh wait we're we're not doing that one (laughs) <laughs> um barry you're next uh okay um i will say ninja turtles um it does exactly what you want a retro throwback game to do which is it looks like what you remember your favorite games look like but in reality when you go back and look at them they're actually not that good but this is the perfect dream and nostalgia memory yeah. you have in your head of what those games look like mm. it's great it's fantastically detailed it's it's a beautiful mesh of of retro and 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 you know high fidelity uh, uh, visuals it's great and it's colorful and it bounces and it has personality um but you know there's basically a, the reason for every cut in this category is it's just not the winner. That's basically the yeah, reason. Yeah. The, the, there's no the, negatives on it. Really. I, I, there's another category later on. I'd be much more inclined to fight for this in where I think it it, it, it is a contender, but th- this isn't the one. It's it's great for all the reasons you said. I love it. It was one where I played a little bit of it when it came out and I was like, oh, really cool. And then again, like everything else where it's like other things come out and you end up having to get to that before the, the deadline or because they're much bigger experiences experiences and you kind of get the vibe very quickly of what that game is etc etc but then i found myself uh because in work we got a series s and we got game pass and because it's couch co-op um i ended up playing a lot of shredders revenge in work with people and it's fucking great 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 one of those a really really great one of those um but yeah it's 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 fine to go um, Garrett. Oh, uh, 
It's it might arguably be the quote unquote best looking game on this list, but uh-huh. I'd say Gran Turismo. It's uh, to me, it's one of the one like if we were going pure graphical fidelity, absolutely. Yeah, but it is the me, highest fidelity. But like, of, you've seen it with Forza, you've seen it with you've seen games look this good before, and part, it just part doesn't of, move me. Part of me wanted to cut it first just because like a, it, it, there's a part of my brain that's like, oh, it's the boring choice for a winner. You know what I mean? It's like I'm so uninterested in that winning, even though like if on you're, a very technical level, it is best looking. Yes. Um, but yeah, it yeah, doesn't I mean, doesn't move me. So I, I feel like I'm I'm the only one that completed, um, but whatever you want to kind of qualify as completing Gran Turismo. Um, yeah, I, the thing you know, it it moves in such a just a smooth way, and it feels good, and you know the cars look good good in the garages. Um, I guess I. I <laughs> I don't want to fuck a car, so you know, like my interest in how good it looks isn't as uh, as, as strong. That is as the exclusive but... qualifier here. It's yeah. like, do you don't want to fuck but, anything? Mark, you that... don't want humans or in your games. So, like, what are you? <laughs> yeah, gonna yeah. Fuck? What are we... you gonna fuck? Yeah. I just want <laughs> pixel don't talk art. <laughs> gotta, gotta fuck something. Gotta fuck <laughs> something. <laughs> Let's just go back to Pong. Just give me two squares and a line, and we're good to go. Yeah, you it, fuck Pong. It is like dong, man. On on a, on a technical <laughs> level, it is definitely like uh, you look at Gran Turismo and you're like, well, yeah, probably objectively, it is the best looking game. But it's uh, you know, I don't know. Sometimes some of the environments aren't quite as 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 interesting as just like obviously the cars are fucking incredible in how they're modeled, but some of the environments, the backdrops it's quite bland it's a fucking driving game like probably you know, because yeah. there are actually the tracks that exist in the world there is that yeah like. i mean you know i've been playing a bunch of uh need for speed unbound and like that the game way really cool the way that game pops where it kind of f- it fuses um like kind of cartoon animations where like you know you do a wheel spin and it does this kind of like cartoon wheel spin off of the wheels like it's got this some really kind of nice stuff it does with the, that and obviously one of these games is like a as a straight like a simulation of racing as you can get while the other is fucking need for speed so yeah. they are doing different things um but you've just reminded me to get uh, Need for Speed Underground onto my Steam Deck as soon as possible. I've been playing a lot of Burnout 3, Mark, and let me tell you, the way the animations, when you take down something in that go, oh boy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah it's, it's Gran Turismo. Is, like, look, I, think of what a Gran Turismo game looks like. It fucking looks like that. You, you I almost it. feel yeah. bad for it because it's like, you're cutting yeah, this. We just... take for granted how amazing it looks. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. Like, we expect it right. to look amazing. It does. Get out of here. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the same thing with like the first party Sony stuff. Anyway, you know, you, it's the same argument with with Horizon and God of War. Like, because I, you know, you look at those games and I, I played through Ragnarok and I was like, this game does look visually incredible at every turn and every single inch of like every part of the environment is, is intricately detailed. But at the same time, it's like watching, you know, a, a Marvel film or, or whatever kind of like action film, and every single element, every second has. Except the computer generated images in that game are much better well, than there Marvel. Is that as well. at the moment. There is that as well, but it's yeah. just there. There is that fatigue of. Yeah, like, I think I, like we we there's there's an argument we probably reached the peak. Like I still don't think a game has looked better than Red Dead Two. I still think that's oh. like maybe like that we're we're we've cl- we're already close to like having hit the peak. So like you can't really get much better. So you're not like moved by the highest, best fidelity game, as opposed to when you look at the the games that are more or less left. Bar one are are more stylized. They're more production design. They're more art design. They're not just high fidelity. Yeah, I'm still and... furious that Red Dead Two didn't win this. <laughs> don't uh, want to. <laughs> Don't want to throw it open up. Was that 2019? Was... Side, side Sinar Sinar Wars? Wars. Or no, Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball. That was oh, Dragon, Dragon Ball. Ball. Uh, yeah, like Dragon Ball Fighters is a great looking game. Yeah, it's yeah, a lot yeah. better than Red Dead 2, though. Is it? But this is the thing. <laughs> we, will, we will have this every year where we'll have the argument about like Red Dead 2 game from a yeah. fidelity aspect against like best like direction. And yeah. I know for me, I will always go with, with our direction over mm. actual fidelity. But yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. So background to me bollocks yeah good luck mate um yeah this this is one of those where it's like we could just pick a five-way tie yeah these are five sensational <laughs> games 
Yeah, like I oh, and I've I never picking a five way tie by the way. No, I, we're not I, going to do it. But you want us like, like we're really getting down to personal preference here. We're, like there's, I don't think there's like a case that one of these games is better looking than the other. No. It's just which among the five of us, which could we meet in the middle on? And I, uh, I, I, I even would have backed Gran Turismo to win. By the way, mm, like that's uh, how impressive that is. I, I, again, just because it's like, ah, oh, it's like. It's just that it's because of that, you know, fidelity, boring choice thing that I was like, I was never in a million years passionate about Gran Turismo as much as I respect the technical detail. Um, okay, for me, uh, like, what of these is my, my, there's two games that I would go for. Of those, which do I think I'm going to get the most amount of people angry about? <laughs> I'm going to well, avoid I know, for I know now. Exactly where this is going, and it let... usually ends up with me being the one person who's angry. So. No, I'm going to go with the thing I might make the less people angry with, but I have not been able to predict you guys at all this year. Um on the kind of basis that it's kind of the Shredder's Revenge thing is like it's a perfect it's the perfect image in your head of a type of game from many years ago, Signalis. I would say there's mm. an element of what you say there is true, but there's also an, a large element of that not being the case at look, all. Look, I, I love that, like, you know, this is a patented Dave Ryan game, Signalis, like from the first moment I played it, I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, but compared to these other ones here for me, there's for me like no. there's such an incredible uh and I you know I spoke about this at the time when I played it there's such an incredible fusion of different styles and genres that come mm. together like in and I would never in a million years have thought that you would have like uh, kind of german brutalism and soviet era iconography and fucking 90s sci-fi anime slapped all together and actually still feel cohesive yeah um, it kind of sounds like your bedroom mark in the uh, mid 2000s <laughs> to be honest to some degree to some degree yeah. <laughs> yeah and yeah there is that kind of like the shovel knight thing of like you look at shovel knight and you think oh this is a nez looking game but if you yeah. actually realize yeah, yeah. like this would never run on the nez no no yeah and and you know signalist has elements of this as well but i i do think that there's so much about not just like the actual visuals of what you're looking at but you know the 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 bit where you have like the title sequence of Signalis and you have like the kind of flashing bits of image of, of, of imagery and symbolism and everything that happens with that. Mm -hmm. And you have like, you know, the, just hear the, the kind of acting screaming at the screen and you have the, the number codes and all these kind of little bits of, of just art direction or like visual direction that happen. Yeah. Um, so many people have made comparisons this year to obviously the, um, survival horror games of the playstation one but i think this game has more in common with metal gear solid than it does those games in terms yeah there's a of, little bit of mgs like, in there the, the ui and the visuals and the presentation yeah. and you know the the story arc and what it does with that as well is is fucking all over the place um i i think for me it's the game that um mm -hmm. Probably this actually in Immortality that I think are the most visually interesting, not purely from a fidelity aspect, but just in terms of direction, what they go for. And, you know, and obviously I'm I'm a sucker for like 90s um, anime and there's so much kind of like ghosts in the show in this. Mm. Uh, I, I, I fucking adore this thing. I love, you know, the PS1 style of visuals. And this is like a, a cleaner version of that. Um, I I do I probably if if I'm gonna look at things to pick up I think the the enemy design as a whole isn't particularly interesting. Yeah. Um, it's you know of that kind of undead zombie sort of visual design. There, there's yeah. not really too much to it. It, it kind of reminds me in that way of Drummer Prey uh, yeah. a few years ago, where it was like, wow, like they put a lot of thought into a lot of this game, and then just like pretty much every enemy on the game is just a black blob. Yeah. just of varying sizes but i feel like that's maybe like the only thing of note that i would say like visually yeah. isn't that interesting i think otherwise uh, it's... There, there's so much to it the the sum is, is i think more than the, the whole is more than the sum of the parts i think is what, is what i'm trying to say like i i would love for someone to write an extensive essay as well, i don't know what it is about low poly horror that's so unsettling but in particular in signalis it's the i think the first person 
sections are just really unsettling in because it's like again it kind of like tmnt it's like it's higher fidelity than a ps1 ever was it runs smoother it looks better there are no wobbly textures anywhere but it's still evoking that era and they're just really unnerving the beach scene late in the game uh with like the red sky above it it's just something really ethereal and kind of just guttural just really unsettling it's just super cohesive. I, I, I mean, I, I love when also just there's something as simple as like when you save the game, you know, you go to the save game and it just flashes this like blinding red yeah. light at you just yeah. to add like it has all these kind of little things. That the make little things the game more unsettling. The little things are you know? great. It has one of the best and these are usually terrible. It has one of the best like fake CRT filters on the um on the pause menu it's like actually yeah. really nice looking I, I i'm torn because like i don't think this wins but i cut other stuff yeah. before it but like i don't know if there's any point fighting for it because i don't yeah. think it's yeah. winning anyway so so we... i mean it is my passion project um but i you know i i we're, there's probably a few of these where we're all kind of out on an island so um, I'd be with you. I would be with you on Signalis, but I also it's not my number one either. So I, you know, yeah, it'll probably only stay for a round. Another or two. round, yeah, yeah, yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. Right, I'm gonna pass the gun over to Mark now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the look, pal. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers. See, Garrett, Garrett's nice and smug now because he's done the maths and know it, he yeah, knows it yeah. won't get he's, down to him. He's I, I don't sailing. have to pick again. I'm fine. You can, be the, you can be the devil on Mark's shoulder. Mark, come on. There's one you know you want to cut. Uh, you know you want to do I, it. I, I mean, look, we've got, to, to anyone that's still uh, listening, we have Live Alive, Immortality, God of War, Ragnarok, and Elden Ring. Um, I would say, like, there's two of these that are doing broadly the same thing, and then yes. two of them are over there yeah. doing something. But the thing is, so I'd I'll... say pick between the two doing broadly the same thing. But the thing is, with when it comes down to like the two that are broadly doing the same thing, one of these is doing a particular style and theme of setting being middle earth fantasy that I do not give a shit about, never have, never will. So, of those two, I would probably go God of War Ragnarok. But it's purely just down to because one of these does a style that I'm wait, slightly wait. more interested in. Ragnarok to cut or save. To save over you Elden would Ring, save God Whoa. of War Ragnarok over yeah. Elden Ring. Because Mark, I would, again, no. again, dead but this by yeah, purely, yeah, yeah, purely yeah. comes down to <laughs> this, this purely comes down to it's doing a setting that I have no interest in. So nothing about the game visually. In in a not in terms of obviously. The oh, do do you you roll like, that sentence back, yeah. young man? <laughs> no, I just I just don't care about it. I Tell just us about don't. the voice actors again, Mark. I love <laughs> it's less controversial. The, you know the boss designs, the character designs, a lot of that sort of stuff. Yeah, great, whatever. But I just the thing about the thing about Elden Ring. All right, because the thing about Elden Ring obviously is in every category we can talk about Elden Ring for seven hours, but we'll, we'll try and keep like it to. succinct. <laughs> The thing about Elden Ring is so all the stuff you mentioned, the enemy design, the boss design, incredible, all this other stuff. But also, like, I would put this under the umbrella of best looking. You also have incredible, like, visual design from, like, on a, on a mechanical level, things that are communicated to you visually. I put, yeah. I nominated this for best moment. It didn't make the cut. Fair enough. I want to shout it out here. The moment where you come out into Limgrave and you get uh, that trophy that says, hey, you're yeah. in Limgrave. And you've got an NPC you can talk to right in front of you. You've got a Castlevania ass fucking castle on a mountainside. The classic, you see that mountain over there. You can go there a moment, but it's really fucking cool. You've got the tree sentinel. And it's like just the, it, the visual design is telling you so much. Oh, my God. Everything from Godric to Radan to every e other every, character along every, the way. Every part of the world feels completely different. Like Limgrave to Liurnia to like every single area you go to like Caelid obviously Caelid, well, of course you know, but it's just you've got all right this one this area is a swamp this area is a forest this area it's is no a oh, you, oh, yo, you Mark Robinson bar. you oh, are you how dare you are, you could be you could do that about anything you can do that about exactly. anything you could you're absolutely oh, right this is God of War there's trees and let snow me, <laughs> let me let me be let me be let me be really I, I, I've said that I feel bad for dumping on it because maybe it's just paying for the sins of the Triple H on it but let me talk about God of War Visually, just if you want to, if you want to, like you know, we're not we're not going on what is the most quote unquote objective best looking game because that would probably be like you know Gran Turismo. It's kind of like what what made us feel something. I got nothing out of fucking God of War, even though I, it is not, the most four K yeah, high fidelity not, not HDR by, game of all time. I got not, nothing out of it. Yeah, not by comparison to the last one, 
because yeah. I yeah. think it, in terms of like what it can show you scale wise and like, oh, this is a cool giant boss or, you know, this is another one of the realms and stuff like that. It's already like it's already shown you that. Do you know what I mean? It's just like a sharper, like more upraised version of the, the, the same thing. Not that that necessarily makes it disqualifying in any way, but no, I, no. I definitely had the like. I didn't have the feeling I had with the other games that are still on this list where the actual visuals that some say is just like hit me for six. Um, The first time I played it and every subsequent moment afterwards absolutely knocked me out. I think this to me, like this could, it it could easily win. And I, I played Elden Ring and I played God of War and I much prefer the way God of War looks to Elden Ring. Everything just looks smoother. It looks nicer. it looks like less, and obviously that's by design with Elden yeah. Ring, right? It's meant to look yes. like things are meant to this, look like yeah. bad and rotting this, and festering and stuff. Yeah. But I don't, I, I don't vibe to that as much as I vibe to the way that God of War looks, where everything just feels epic and ethereal and otherworldly, and like you are in realms with the gods, which to me feels cooler mm. than what Elden Ring is trying to do because it just kind of looks like a lot of the other FromSoft games and one of the things that oh, puts me I off didn't... FromSoft games is the way they look. Yeah. I, I I don't I don't get that at all. No, I I think, I think it looks completely looks different like to Bloodborne from... to Second Dark world. Souls. All the enemies like... and stuff look exactly the no. same. No, so. no, way, now you're no going way. even further off. Any like, on the, on the, yeah. like on the subject of, of on the subject of enemy design, it's like the again. I'm only a couple of hours into God of War, but it's like the most honest lizard man, fucking skeleton warrior. It's so boring. Like I, I, I like, and again, this is. The, the the conversation about the visuals is kind of the same conversation that I have broadly about God of War overall, which is I'm looking at it. And I'm certainly not saying it looks it's like finely crafted. It's great. You know, I mean, create the character model of Kratos is great. Of course it is. But I'm sitting there watching. I'm, I'm like in the most in the most romanticized way about me, uh, media making you feel something. It's like I'm getting nothing out of this. I'm not wowed by it. It's, I like there's nothing yeah. like there's nothing. What's that big fucking snake in the first game called the World Eater or some shit? What the fuck is the that? World thing? Serpent. Uh, well, the World Serpent. Serpent. There's nothing that I saw that's like oh look at that fuck. There's nothing. It's just kind of like it's 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 even though it's a more artistic and exciting yeah. and fantasy laden game than Gran Turismo. God of War to me might as well be Gran Turismo because it's just it's high fidelity everything and no emotion for me anyway. Yeah, like because. You know, you, you know what's funny is like there is a very similar moment to the world serpent early doors in Ragnarok with the um I can't think of the name of the thing. The big but thing you know, in it's James, like big, big thing in James, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you get the same thing of the sense of scale and this huge thing with its head popping out of the water and stuff like that. And whereas when I saw the world serpent, I borderline gasped yeah, by myself like playing the, the game. Floor moment. Whereas like, oh, they're doing the thing again. You know what I mean? Um, so what's what what like, it, it feels it, it, like to me with another from game? It's, they're doing it's, the thing again. But it's no, it's like, what, what I'm no, getting from my this. Opinion. It, what I'm yeah, getting yeah, from that is my opinion. opinion. Absolutely, I, like, I respect yours as well. Yeah, 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 that's I, I, and that's I'm, and that's I suppose what my my rounded point was like. I I am saying that like of these four, uh, my fourth of four is God of War Ragnarok. But to back up Jack's case a little bit is like I am acknowledging that we are down to four incredible looking games here, and we're trying to pick between them. And this is the least i have been to echo barry this is the the one that moves me the least the one that i think like it just has this is sony first party sheen rather than a particular art direction and style that is deliberately done to behoove the type of game and experience that you're having which is what the other three do what i'm getting from this is pushback on elden ring would that be yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could say survive, that. It's a vibe I'm getting. I think, I think, I think, because there's been effectively there's been pushback on everything. Because obviously, you well, know, well, we haven't uh, spoke about live alive yet. Well, this, this is what I was going to say. Oh. Is just kind of like, and the, yeah. So, like, I mean, do, do we want to talk about live alive and then just vote? Is that um, is that is that too quick, or do we want to cut one before we vote? Live alive I would looks probably... fucking incredible, man. <laughs> it looks very cool. It does. does it come down to live alive and do like Ragnarok and Elden Ring just cancel each other out and it comes no, down to live alive and no, immortality? No, I by the sounds of it, I don't think Car- cards on the place. table. Elden Ring wins for me. I will say that. I, I've got, here. I've like, I've got maybe 
in spite of the fact I tried to cut it first, like I said, I would probably put Immortality top. See, it's at this point now, now I start to have the, the voice in my head about the whole Immortality, do we yeah. really want to kind of qualify I, uh, or not? The, the, this, is, this is where I'm like... Oh, the th- the thing about now. it is, it's, it's kind of... I, I don't think it, it, it gets any kind of disqualification for being FMV. I think that's all. But yeah. if we just talk about, is it winning or not? This is the way we're saying well, it's, it's probably not winning because yeah. for as much as yeah, we talk... You guys but, you, but that's the thing, right? It didn't need to go into the level of detail in yeah. terms of like how those three films like if mm. It, it, there are so many things they could have skipped out on and it still would have still you know, conveyed the it, story needed to but and the fact that it went to that level of detail and when you're trying to talk about best looking thing of the year it looks unlike anything else this year or any of several years past yeah. as well it's the most singular visual experience of all four that remain on the list because even if you want to be really picky about live alive as much as i love it i was gonna say live alive is like neck and neck for second place with elden ring for me um you could say that wait is, is life... immortality not first for anybody no it's first for me oh right you said like you yeah. said elden ring there no, Elden Ring and um, sorry, Elden Ring and Live Alive are neck and neck for second. Oh, Immortality right. is above them. Um, Live Alive, yes, that looks absolutely incredible. But you could argue it's just a slightly kind of more refined version of what they did with Octopath Traveler and Triangle Strategy as well. The HD two D, I love it, and I think all those fucking games, all those old two D. JRPGs should be remade in the HD 2D and I might actually enjoy some of them because of it. And I love Elden Ring. Uh, sorry, uh, Live Alive. Um, but yeah, that's like my only kind of like, if I'm trying to pick something at Live Alive because it's it's fairly perfect. And it's impressive it with Live Alive. as well. Now, obviously it does have the backdrop of the original to work off of, but it's still having to take uh, like seven very different periods of time yeah. and still make a cohesive art style mm-hmm. that you know works. something that gives each time period its own feel but gives it a unifying feel as yeah. a, a whole game which is yeah. like a, and, a very tough challenge but i will say this for all of that and, and to be honest this is kind of my issue with live alive as a whole the, the first it's too good no, the it's seven just chapters. Too good. It blows your eyes off, and then you don't have eyes anymore. So then you have to vote against it. The seven chapters yeah, with all of that. that is absolutely like, yeah, it nails all of that. But then the last part of the game, it falls. It's like back the perfect into... Dragon Quest version. That's yeah. what they're doing. It's like the perfect recreation of Dragon no, Quest see, at the end. Yeah, can I, I, think can I say pro- that we, we I'm having about... not played a Dragon Quest game, then I think I might be. And it might be fair for me to say I probably wouldn't like Dragon Quest games. Can, can I, like, I also if, say if, one if, of my favorite you are like one of my favorite menus of the year is the chapter select screen where they're standing on the plinths oh, and then nice. that, yeah. after you've beaten each chapter that plinth so, sometimes changes you know based yeah. on like choices you make and, and things like that it's love that screen. yeah but let me tell you about the UI in Signalis right? and no. also you fight fake Hulk Hogan that's true <laughs> yeah. that is true uh, but like if you go back and look at the original Live Alive that game's ugly oh it's like it's, it's ugly it's, it's a not very a good looking game. reason why it didn't get released in the West because it looks yeah. terrible yeah yeah, because compared to the the games at the time, compared to Final Fantasy V and VI, it, it just looked bad. It's yeah. an ugly looking game. So they took an ugly looking game and made it look absolutely unbelievable. Like the lighting in this game, because I played all of like like Dave, you did raise the other HD two D games. I played them all. I played Octopath Traveler. I played uh, Triangle Strategy, and like they all look really nice. But this has like a level of sheen above yeah. and beyond. And I'm not sure it's, is it just because they, they have it contained to these roughly like one, two hour yeah. situations that they can really refine how each yeah. looks. But like the lighting in all of these scenes, yeah. like particularly the Western one, when you see like just the sun shining through the the bar, the, the windows yeah. of the saloon, it's, the, it's jaw dropping. It's, it's insane how good it it's looks. It's the perfect pixel art diorama. And like, it's so weird for a HD2 game, for HD 2D game for me to say it's got some of the best water of the year as well <laughs> yeah like they like you did for a game that has that aesthetic for the most part you didn't need to do that much effort on the water lads you didn't need to make it look that resplendent and refreshing uh but you did anyway you crazy sons of bitches um we seem i mean this is on me and the thing is i really don't have a horse in this race at, at this point so I think the rest of us have a vote for one of them, right? Yeah. I'm Live Alive, Dave's Immortality, Jack is God of War, and Barry is Elden Ring. So, Mark, you want to break the tie? Oh. <laughs> you need to decide the whole thing. God, I right, guess I Mark. could, couldn't I? Mark, come on. 
think of yeah. like it's uh, not after it's not he just dispassionately listen, said he doesn't care. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, it's not Elden Ring. Yeah, listen, yeah, yeah, listen, listen, Mark, it's not, it's, I realize it's not most good looking things in it, but think of how good Elden Ring looks and think of the scope. Think of everything. I don't that's care in that what game. you say, I'm not picking Elden Ring. Why not? It is the it best. It doesn't interest game. me visually. It has moments the the when you come down, oh, um, you like to like the underworld section and you see like just how much more there is to the game, but the thing is. A lot of what you're selling me on this game is basically like it's got scale, and it's like yeah, great, okay, cool, whatever. But on a on a note to note basis, there are parts where it's interesting, but it's still doing a setting. And again, this is purely subjective thing. I don't give a shit about fantasy; doesn't just does nothing for me. So you it's are, never okay. going to win on that basis. You, you've anti swayed me. I'm moving, leaving immortality. I'm going to Elden Ring. Oh, Dave Aww. Ryan, you're the you see Dave Ryan knows I've, everything Ryan. you've said that you don't like about it. I'm like, fuck, you are so wrong. You are like, so like, wrong. Like, all those like, like when look. you go like the game, you're, you're so I much of it is great, and then if you go. Yeah. In that, I'm changing to live alive. You, you find <laughs> the, <laughs> Hey, listen, I'm really, I'm willing to gamble on the public vote on this one. So yeah, I'm really, yeah, I, I, I don't have faith in live alive in this situation. Mark, hey Mark, how are you feeling about live alive here, buddy? Like when you like, like there's all the stuff on the surface of of Elden Ring, and then like you find one of those wells, and you go to uh, like underground, dude. The underground first cities. I, I, I don't know which one you, like you find first, so I, I I don't know. But the one where it's just like like the sky in those underground wells yes. is like a big galaxy. Oh my god! It's, it's yeah, incredible. that's that's the bit I was talking about. It it is it is unbelievable. Absolutely. Like it on some level, you have to appreciate moments. that, even if it's it not your has... bag moments like that for sure absolutely for sure yeah. and i'm not but, even but uh, even like god of war ragnarok has moments as well just, like both of course it does the whole moments. game something like moments. something oh, like something like you know just when you find like um a carriage being drawn by two giants around the world in elden ring oh, and, and the it's... intricate design of one the giants two how they're tied to the carriage and then just even the ornate design of the fucking carriage itself like it's just and their their big animation is a swing and also the thing we gave moment of the year like i was saying about the limb grave moment part of what makes that moment the best moment of the year is the visual design of that yeah. set piece and the it, visual it's design all, of it's all like poetry they rhyme okay so the, every time we brought elden ring up one of the things we keep talking about is like the visual impact of various moments the fucking dragon arm like arm. every single boss design, every single enemy design, like it, everything is so intricate, so well thought out. And the and it, it, everything is so unique, but blends together as a cohesive world. The big it's dumb sarcophagus cats that you fight. Come oh on, my no, God. It's going to win so many categories. Yeah, but you just, know, just Immo it. immortality looks really good. It like, does look it really does. good. But no one's then you're just going to go to the poll and Elden Ring is going to win. <laughs> Because what we have two two between Live Alive and Elden Ring right now is that it? Mm -hmm. I see. Like I that? would change my vote back if Dave changed his vote back. I'm not gonna. Wait, hang on. Totally would be my number two. So don't vote out of spite. I've political I've, I've, swayed, I've swayed Dave to my camp. Yeah. he's not. He's not cheating. No, no. Mark swayed yeah. him by he, burying I was, I was, I, I, Yeah, I was tiptoeing out the door, and then Mark was just like so off the reservations. Like I can't. The funny, do the funny thing is, like that. I, I, for most of my life, I'm also not a big fancy. I, I hate Lord of the Rings. I fucking hate it. Okay, uh, you know, Barry, I, Barry, I'm no Dave. Stay with board. me. Dave, stay with me. Stay with me. My, my like, point like, is that I, if Dave, anything, Dave, this I like Lord of the Rings. They're big good movies. This like, made me a high here. fantasy fan. <laughs> My my point is more that it, it's just so impressive that it get it got me on board. Yeah. Anyway, so what what are we at? So we're two Elden Ring, two Live Alive, is it? Yeah, Mark, you want to make a call or go to the poll? Uh, having conclusively said you don't care, <laughs> All right, we're at the third deadlock here. All so. right, I'm I'm. If I pick Live Alive, I am partially just just doing it out of spite for Elden Ring, and I'm, I, I'm I'm fine with that. I am bigger than that. But which do you think is better, Live Alive or Elden Ring? Like, like without, uh, without spider, pure judgment. Which did you prefer to look at? This but the year? thing live is, if I wanted, to, if I wanted to pick like a game based on like a, uh, uh, like a, a pixel art, two D sprite style, stylish sort of game, I would have fucking again dragged Norco back into the list. I, you I, never I, nominated it. Get out of here. I did nominate <laughs> did. it. I was the only one. Else did. That's yeah. the issue. Dave there. killed it. Get it out of here. <laughs> would you pick? Would you pick Turtles over over Live Alive? Um. 
No, I mean, Turtles is a good one of those. I think Live Alive is is more interesting. It, like some of the stuff, like the lighting and whatnot. I think like okay, I, I was being mildly facetious. Okay, yeah. all right. Look, it's <laughs> really like, Turtles. Just, just send it to the poll. I can't because no, because if it goes to the polls, Elden Ring wings and and, and I. But just, hang on, hang on. Why are we? Why are we talking hard. about no. that? Like that's a, an accursed occurrence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's oh it's no, the public vote is the way we've always done. There was that shit earlier with Mar- Marcella What's her face who won. Okay. Let the poll be the poll. Marcella what's her face? Marcella Swartz. I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't want Elden Ring to miss out on an award <laughs> it, it, it deserves on some weird. I just don't want it to have it. Bit. Yeah. It's gonna it, win so is. many awards. So I. Well, I as far I, as I'm concerned, the best game should okay, win okay. your podcast that matters. Yeah. First of all, one, okay. First of all, first of all, like you know, if a game wins an award, it wins an award. Like, yeah. and, and it's not gonna win that many. It was a joke. Through. It, it, it was a joke. It's not winning best story. I know that much. I'm being a shit. I, I won't die on that hill. That's fine. <sighs> Make I would a call. Prob- I, would, I would probably say I would Ragnarok. probably go immortality because I think it is the most interesting visually. So that, that would then take it to the polls. So okay. take it to the polls. Okay. Take it to the polls. I, mean, oh, oh, I, I, I hope like, Sid wins, wins the poll. Imagine if, if Alice wins the poll, I'm going to just love it. That, imagine, that's imagine not how I, this works, Barry. <laughs> imagine if I fuck Barry over and just switch back to Immortality. <laughs> you should. <laughs> I, won't. I won't. I will switch also. No, I, don't I won't. Know. I'm good for one switch, uh, but I'm not going to... Immortality is bottom. He's not going to come back to the Brits. Like, it just... No. No, had enough of that. No. I okay. can't believe Mark had the opportunity to, to form an alliance with me and Garrett there. Okay, would you I, like it? Sure that that started island. very civilly, by the way. We we're all like, these but, are all very nice looking. And the second Mark took a uh, put a boot into Elden, it descended <laughs> yeah. into chaos. It was, <laughs> it, the knives came out. They finally came out. Probably would, won't be the first time. We shall do I, this. Shall I do in reverse order from third to build yes. suspense? Okay, sure. in third place, uh, at joint third place with fourteen point six percent of the vote, God of War Ragnarok, and Live Alive. Yeah, I mean it's over. In second place, with 17.1%, Horizon Forbidden West. Tasteless monsters, the lot of them. <laughs> this okay. is what you tell me straight Garrett, came first, right? Garrett, we have learned before, if you incur the wrath of the listener poll next year, you will be in trouble <laughs> if you need to rely on us. There was one year where... Um, didn't you, Did you cut a promo on them, Jack? And then the next year they were going against you every time. No, no, I would never cut a promo on the listeners. I love the, the people. listeners. Uh, winning with 24.4% of the vote is Elden Ring. Yeah, The only well, game well, I would have been mad at is God of War. I, I, I was fine with all three of the other ones winning, so I'm happy. I, I think um, the way I'm seeing immortality shake out in these polls, like it got two votes, is that... Um, nobody played it. No, nobody, nobody played, played it. No, yeah, nobody it's really suffering from that more than any of the other biggies on our list. Even though it did um, technically win based on a listener poll, but that's either here or there. Uh, yeah. Such a boring choice. It, so, the most boring choice imaginable would be God of War. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. sorry. It. No, no, no. The most boring go choice is Gran Turismo. Let's leave it. No, no. Yeah. God of War is yeah. worse than Gran Turismo. Come on. Now. No, it fucking isn't. It absolutely You're is. You're off your tree. I'm on the Elden Tree winning this category, sir, is what I am on. Me and the public. It's called the Elden Tree. Hello. Bear. <laughs> and Dave, my mate Dave, who I yeah, love. Exactly, Look, yeah. the person I, I also really think won I, I didn't. I didn't actually talk about it. It's a very good looking game. It deserves to win. Hell yeah, <laughs> Elden Ring. I love Live Alive, but oh, Elden Ring deserves to win. Come on, yeah, yeah. yeah. What are we we'll playing here? Mark won. What, well, yeah, what are we doing? No, it's a fantastic. No it's amazing. Mark the level of art design of that game is through the roof. Come on, yeah. Absolutely. No one can be mad that Elden Ring won best looking. Come on, no, I'm not mad. Can't be. <laughs> other than Mark, who, who fucking hates fun. castles, apparently. <laughs> he just can't do. He drove past a castle the other country, day. Can't work a castle. <laughs> you moved to the wrong country, let me tell you. I don't like castles. <laughs> 2022's best looking game Elden Ring. <laughs>